All rise. I want viewers watching my show to believe in themselves. Judge Hatchett is compelling. I was not the first one to throw a walk. Let me just tell you what you just said. Compassionate. I really enjoy being a judge. Now I am touching people who I will never know I touch. She's powerful. You should have never let them walk out of your life when she was three. And she's on the bench. Don't get me preaching up in here today. Right. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. Barberta Harrison is suing her son-in-law, Jerry Watkins Sr., in the amount of $825. Ms. Harrison claims Mr. Watkins should pay for her couch to be reupholstered after her grandson damaged it. Mr. Watkins claims Ms. Harrison gave his son access to her home, so she can't blame him for the damages his son caused. All rise. Court is now in session with the Honorable Judge Hatchett presiding. Your Honor. Thank you very much, Officer Herrera. You may be seated. I know people get tired of me saying this, but it just always concerns me when we've got family members in here suing each other. Sad. It is. It's always. I just, I just, I know I sound like a broken record on this, but it does. It just bothers me. All right, Ms. Harrison, why is it necessary for you to bring suit for $825? Tell me what happened. Um, Your Honor, you know, I um, came home, my sofa was stained. I had gone on a um, couple days on a trip that I had planned. I had told my son-in-law I was going, and he knew I was going to be out, of, you know, be out of town for a couple of days. So in turn, you know, he decides to go off on some trip, you know. And in the meantime, um, our, my grandson, he has a key to my house. He comes and goes because I have been taking care of him ever since my daughter passed five years ago. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear um, that. I yeah, am. But, I'm you really know, we've, sorry to hear that. We've gotten together. You, we made plans. We know that we're both, you know, taking care of him, and it's okay, you know. He has a key. He comes and, and goes. And how old is he now? He's 16. So 16. he's old enough and he's responsible, but he's still a child, you know. And, you know so you have to have guidance. And while I was out of town, he decides, my son-in-law decides, he's going to take an overnight trip. Well, this means there's nobody there to take care of Junior. He tells Junior to stay home. Junior comes over my house. So he has a party, and in the meantime, at my house. So something spills on my sofa, and I have now, I have a stain that I can't get out. I've had people come in, you know, try to get it out. They can't get it out. So, you know, basically, I need to have it reupholstered. So the only option is to get it reupholstered? Yes. Because I was point. thinking, how do we get $825 for a stain? But what you're saying is you tried to get the stain removed. I tried to get it out. And the only option now is to have yeah. the um, sofa Yeah, because I've had it, you know, since the 90s, and it's very comfortable. I want to keep it. You know, I just need to get the stain, you know. And I've asked him, you know, a number of times. He doesn't want to do it. He just feels we need to, you know, make, you know, junior pay. Junior's not working. Junior's, you know, he's in school. You know, he runs track. You know, he doesn't really have time to get a job. And at this point, getting a job and paying for the sofa, it would take months. I don't want months. Months have already passed. I'm sitting there at the house with a stain. I want the stain removed. All right, Mr. Watkins, you all couldn't work this out? Since my wife passed, it's true, she's been a tremendous help. Um, you know, she's been a godsend. I honestly don't know how we would have made it without her assistance. However, uh, this particular instance, when I decided to go out of town, um, she did let me know that she would be out of town. When I left, it was kind of a last minute thing. I was only going to be gone for 10 to 12 hours. Uh, my, true, overnight, but my son has shown himself to be responsible in the past. So why was it so important that you had this last minute spur of the moment trip when you knew she was going to be out of town? Yeah, yeah. Well, I recently started dating and about a year ago I met this lovely woman by the name of Regina and she's helped me a lot over well, good. this past year. Well, good. And, um, I'm glad to hear that. We just had a one-year anniversary since we met, and I knew that she had never been to San Francisco before, so I wanted to surprise her. So I come back home, and I get a call from my mother-in-law uh, complaining about her couch being ruined and saying that she believes that my son had something to do with it. So I put him on the phone with her, and 
He initially lied, said that he had nothing to do with it. He didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. But upon further questioning, once she got off the phone, he was honest with me. Coming up on The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. And I guess she decided to do some digging to find out exactly why I had been out of town. Once she found out that I was dating, everything changed. And later... From the top, he's like... Hey, I got the ring, I got this rock, I'm on a rock, like, will you marry me? I, I was confused. The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Barberta Harrison, who is suing Jerry Watkins Sr. for property damage. Did he apologize to you? He apologized, but my whole thing is that, you know, um, my son-in-law was irresponsible. He should not have been left home alone. So tell me the issue. Originally, there was no repair bill. Now. A few days go by, and I guess she decided to do some digging to find out exactly why I had been out of town. Once she found out that I was dating, everything changed. Do you think your mother-in-law is resenting you for now dating someone else? That's exactly what I think, Your Honor. I'm going to get to the $825. Miss Harrison, mm -hmm. I mean, let's keep it real. Yeah. You and me. Yes, ma'am. Do you resent the fact that he has a girlfriend now he's dating? I resent the fact that he couldn't talk to me. I mean, I don't mind him having a girlfriend. It's been five years. I understand you have to move on. So having a girlfriend is fine, but for you to go out of town during the same time that I'm out of town, that's not a coincidence. So mm -hmm. I felt like, you know, you felt good. You know, she's out of town. Let me go out of town now. Let me get this over. You know, I can do this too. And then you left, just left my grandson there, you know, alone. So why not have your son work this debt off well that's exactly what i suggested initially um that you know he do yard work or housework or whatever it is that she needs done to be able to pay off this debt my grandson and goes to school and he runs track you know you tell me that. i feel as though he's working his way toward a scholarship that he will be able to help pay his way through college he's still responsible for his for own to actions to i am trying to raise a young man all right, let me more. tell you how this is going to work, Mr. Watkins. Let me, let me tell you how this is going to work. I'm going to enter judgment for the plaintiff for the $825. I am. And let me tell you why. Because if you don't see it, I see that this relationship does not need to be strained over $800 plus. It does not. What she gives and what value she brings to you and your son, you can't put a price on it. Because, I mean, I just want to make sure you all are good before I leave here today, because otherwise I'm going to take you and put you back in my chambers <laughs> and lock you in there yeah. with this no, wonderful fine, officer, <laughs> Herrera, and not let you out until I'm satisfied. Are you good? I just honestly believe that the $825 isn't going to change anything, Your Honor. Now, let me come down here and talk to you. You know what? Because you're just hard-headed. You're just hard-headed. That's all it is with you. That's you're just exactly hard-headed. You're going to pay the $825, and then you're going to work on trying to fix this. And you're not going to hide stuff from her, and you're going to be open with her because she is your family. Your wife is not here, but she will always be your family. And if this woman is worthy, and I hope she is, then she ought to be worthy for you all to go out to dinner. Exactly. Uh, that, uh, that's uh, what uh, I wanted to prove first. I was not going to introduce her to my son or no, nor anyone else unless I was sure that this is the woman that I'm going to marry. Are you sure? I, mean, I don't want to put you on blast on TV. You don't have to answer that. Well, yeah, I, you know, she could be watching. She could, she, yeah, she could be, so I'm not going to put you on blast. But you got to come to grips with this, you understand? Yeah, sure. And she is going to be a part of your life forever. Your son has got to understand that you're not trying to replace his mother. Right. But that you are a family. Right. And that she's going to have to come in and be a part of this family. Right? Understood. Understood? Yes, ma'am. Are we good? Yes, we are, Your Honor. We sure? Yes, we are. All right, nothing further. We'll stand adjourned. Thank you. Coming up. From the top, he's like, hey, I got the ring. I got this rock. I'm on a rock. Like, will you marry me? I, I was confused.
Network, featuring dynamic judges and live legal programming. Well, we're not okay. at your school. We're in my courtroom. Unique court shows. Where is any information about the company? Live legal news. That's what you should have done. And a commitment to justice. Either you tried or you did it. The next generation of court programming in one dynamic network. Justice Central. You're watching Justice Central. Stay tuned. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. Samantha Alders is suing Roger Mathers in the amount of $2,475. Ms. Alders claims Mr. Mathers owes her three months of unpaid rent after he moved out when she broke off their short-lived engagement. Mr. Mathers claims he risked his life proposing to the plaintiff under fraudulent circumstances and says he suffered financial and emotional consequences because of it, so he owes her nothing. Understand, Samantha, that there was a time when you and Roger were lovers, is that correct? And that, in fact, you all were living together. And now you're on opposite sides of my courtroom. What happened, Samantha? I met Roger when I was 19. I was still in college, pretty much fresh out of high school. Cut to Three years later, we're moving in together. I had an apartment with a roommate. She was moving out when the lease was up. And I was already spending so much time over at Roger's place, or he was at my place. It just made sense for him to move in and take the next step. And when you moved in, did you, did you assume part of the lease? Did you sign a lease? What happened? So I agreed to pay half of the rent, um, but I knew that she was going to school and she was uh, not very good with spending. So I said, you know what, just to take the ease off of you, I'll cover the first three or four months of rent. So okay, I so you paid the first three or four months of rent, is that correct, Samantha? It was the first four months of four rent. Four months yes. of rent. Okay, so the first four months of rent, you took on the full responsibility. Yes. All right, so then what happened? Everything was still good. Um, I decided to take the next step and propose. Um, uh, the first proposal was not really, didn't go well at all. Uh, so why didn't it go well? Tell me what happened. Okay, so... Do I need to get comfortable for this story? <laughs> oh, yeah. So um, she has a favorite, a, a really nice Greek restaurant that we've been to a few times. And it's, it's pretty big and it's really extravagant and it matches her personality. She's very extravagant. Um, so, and I'm not. <clears throat> so I decided to take it upon myself and be a daredevil and proposed to her in a site that she loves. So I was really nervous, very S nervous. Sounds pretty romantic, though. I, you know, that's what I thought would, would be fine. Um, so to ease my nerves, I had a drink. And a drink? <laughs> well, I had a drink, and then I had another one because the drink didn't really do anything okay. for me. My, I was still very nervous. I had a third drink and... Oh, now we're at the third drink. Yes, yes ma'am. Oh, I can yeah. see, I can oh, see yeah. why this went down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right, I'm not laughing, I'm sorry. Well, go, okay. go, go on, go That's on, all right. let me get my The waiter laughed too, here. so it was, you know. All right, so everyone laughed. Third, everyone laughed right third right. drink. So after the third drink, um, I got around to doing this sloppy proposal. So I got on my knee and I proposed, but I was really, really sloppy. It was a really sloppy proposal, and it was just not good. She denied the proposal and said, you know, you have to show me more respect. Um, I'm not going to accept that. If you... And you understand why she I, I completely understand. Okay, so respect. Samantha, that didn't go well. It did not. I told him no, absolutely not, if this was how he thought marriage is just something that you could drunkenly get someone to do with you. I was not about well, it. I told I him he had think, to do better. I don't think he intended to be drunk. You know, I mean, I'm trying to give him a little slack here. Okay, so then what happens after this? Well, you all continue to live together. We went home, kind of tried to forget about it, laughed it off a little bit. Um, okay. We, we moved fast. And one day I get a FaceTime call from Roger, which was weird for me because we don't usually FaceTime, just conversations and texts. Okay. But I answer it, and he's on the top of, like, a cliff or something. So now you have a picture of this cliff. Someone yeah. has a yes. picture of this cliff? Yes, I have one. All right. So you get this FaceTime from he's, Roger. He's on Morro Bay Rock and, and from the top he's like, hey, I got the ring, I got this rock, I'm on a rock, like will you marry me? It was all very over the top and um, I don't know, I said yes. Like what else am I going to say? If I 
say no, maybe he'll throw himself off the edge or slip or get distracted. And I, I was confused. Coming up, there was this kind of kind of ledge, steep ledge, grassy area. And I got down there and then all of a sudden there was like just a fall. A verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Samantha Alders, who is suing Roger Mathers for breach of contract. And she accepts, and what happens, Roger? After she says yes, I notice that there, you know, I want to get down, obviously. So I see a way, and it's not the way that I came up. I saw it like a kind of a shortcut, and I, long story short, I got, I didn't get physically stuck, but I felt trapped because there was this kind of, kind of ledge, steep ledge, grassy area, and I got down there, and then all of a sudden there was like just a fall. So a rock slid down and it crumbled and I just, I panicked. I would have too. Yeah, I panicked, I lost it. So I waited about 15 minutes to try to calm myself down. But then once I realized like there was no getting out of the situation, I just kind of, I bit the bullet and swallowed my pride and I called, I called Sam back and I said, hey, you know, I know we just got off the phone, but I need you to get help because I'm, I'm stuck. stuck. Yeah, I'm stuck. Yeah. And so you called for help. Yes, that day definitely took a turn, and I called 911. And he was airlifted out of there because he was okay. I mean, they just kind of sent him on his way, but it was a whole thing. Uh, they brought in a helicopter, fire trucks. Everyone was watching. Um, everyone knew about it. It was extremely embarrassing. I was glad he was safe, but something about that whole incident like jarred me and it made everything seem very real. Once I knew that he was on his way home, I started to calm down and realized that, I don't know, maybe I didn't see a forever future with this So you person. made a mistake. You made a mistake in accepting the proposal. I did. And, and I, had to, I had to put things right and tell him in person that it probably... And so you told him. I told him I wasn't home, ready. And you said, I'm not ready. Is that what she said to you? Uh, more or less, yes. And so what happened? Is that when you packed up and left? Pretty much. As soon as that happened, um, my heart just like crumbled. I felt like that Mission Bay Rock was my heart and it just fell all, all in the ocean. And so I, I left. I, I felt like I was living in fraudulent circumstances and she was just stringing me along for rent. Judge Hatchett's verdict when we return. I think we ought to be fair about this. The fact that he paid for the first four months, I'm going to call this a wash. Um, I'm not going to order him to pay the $2,475, but today, Samantha, I am going to deny your claim. It is so ordered. There's nothing further. We'll stand dismissed. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been denied. I really did have mixed emotions when we were living together. I think the judge's ruling was fair. I think you just should have told me earlier how you felt.